Hi guys, welcome to section 96A. We're going to analyze functions and this whole crazy title with successive differences. We'll talk about that. But first of all, if you notice, there's three kinds of functions that I'm going to ask you to identify. Remember, functions is just a fancy way of saying equations. What kind of equation is it? So we've got three options right now, and we've talked about all three of these this year. So you could have a linear function. A linear function is exactly what it sounds like. It is a line. A line is straight. You could have a quadratic function, which we've been talking about for some time now. We've done a lot of different things with quadratics. We've factored them, solved them, graphed them, blah, blah, blah. And remember, the name of a quadratic function is a parabola. And you could have an exponential function. An exponential function is, um, it's a curve, it's not linear. And if you remember back in, my gosh, I can't remember, I think it was the first semester, we talked about exponential growth or exponential decay. And that's what these graphs looked like. I remember doing XY tables and finding things, and we had negative exponents. Please notice this equation right here. Y equals A times B to a power. So that's what our exponential um, equation looks like. We all know what a quadratic function looks like. That's our standard form. And a linear function, the easiest way, is in MX plus B form. So our job is going to be to do a couple things. Identify from data. So I might give you a graph and say, is this linear, quadratic, or exponential? I might give you an XY table with values and ask you that same question. And then in class, we'll talk about how to write the equations when I give you that data or when I give you that graph. So practice. 1a and b, it says to graph the sets of ordered pairs, determine whether they represent a linear, a quadratic, or an exponential function. So let's do a quick set of, of points. Notice I've got these sets of um, ordered pairs. Please hit pause, graph these guys, and let's get these on the graph. Negative 2, 5, negative 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 5. If I connect these dots, it seems pretty apparent to me. What kind of function is this? Look above. Is it linear, is it quadratic, or is it exponential? I think you would probably all agree that this is a quadratic. This is a parabola. Everybody likes parabolas. B, if I sketch these points, negative 2 up a fourth, negative 1 up a half, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 4. Again, hit pause here because I graphed those pretty quick. Make sure that you do that. When I connect these dots, will they be linear? Did I give you enough information to know if it's a parabola? All I can do is use the information that was given. It looks to me like that's what I've got. Because it doesn't tell me where the vertex is and um, turn my direction like the last example, I'm going to say that this is an exponential. So it's just looking at the shape. Sometimes, however, I'm not going to give you a nice easy sets of ordered pairs and ask you. I'm going to have data, like these two practice um, XY tables at the bottom, and we're going to look at the patterns. So if we're going to use patterns to identify functions, we're going to find the differences in our Ys. So I'm going to actually look at the X. The Xs are pretty much always going to go up by 1 every time. So i got to look at how are the Ys, what's the pattern of the Ys. And here's what happens. If the first differences are, are all equal, so the first time we go through this, it's going to be linear. If I do that all over, if I take my new y values and the second differences are all equal, it's a quadratic. If those two don't work, none of the above, then I set up ratios and see if they're all equal so the data is exponential. <coughs> 
So it's all about looking at the whys. Hit pause if you need to get that copy down because I'm going to scroll up to right here because I want to look at, oh, there we go. I'm going to keep that. So we're in problem 2A. It says look for a pattern in each to determine which kind of model best describes the data. When I say which kind of model, is it linear, is it quadratic, or is it exponential? Those are your three options. So notice on practice 2A, my x's go up by 1 every time, right? Nothing big there. However, my y's, how do I get from negative 18 to negative 13? Add 5. How do I get from negative 13 to negative 8? Add 5. Negative 8 to negative 3? Negative 3 to positive 2? So look at those open bullets up there. This is the first time, first differences, the first time that I did the subtraction. First differences. Subtraction is difference. If the first differences are all equal, like adding 5, adding 5, adding 5, adding 5, the data represents a linear function. In 2B, let's do the same thing. So I'm going to look at my table. X's go up by 1 every time. Nothing exciting there. My Y's, how do I get from negative 3 to negative 7? That's going down, right? So subtract 4. How about negative 7 to negative 9? You might think it's minus 4, but it's not. Subtract 2. What about negative 9 to negative 9? I didn't change at all, so 0. How do I get from negative 9 to negative, zero, or to negative 7? That's an add 2. Is this first time that I did my differences, are they all equal? They're not, right? So it's not linear. So now I'm going to do second differences. I'm going to take those answers that I just wrote down, and I'm going to ignore the table completely. I'm just going to think to myself, how do I get from negative 4 to negative 2? That's plusing 2. How do I get from negative 2 to 0? How do I get from 0 to 2? So in this one, my second difference is the second time that I did all of this, um, how do I get from 1 to the next? So those guys are all equal. So if the second differences are all equal, I've got myself a quadratic. So it's all about the pattern. <coughs> Let's do one more. I don't have that benefit of that other stuff now. So letter C. My X's all go up by 1. Big deal. My Y's. How do I get from 8 to 4? Subtract 4. How about 4 to 2? How about 2 to 1? How about 1 to 1 half or 0.5? If you're not sure how to do that, take the second minus the first. So 4 minus 8, or 2 minus 4. So the second minus the first when you do those differences, if you're just going to go to calculator. So are my first differences all the same? So now I need to check my second differences, right? If the first don't, don't tell me it's linear, I keep going. If I get an answer, I'm done. So my second differences. How do I get from negative 4 to negative 2? Going up by 2. How do I get from negative 2 to negative 1? How about negative 1 to negative 1 half? So my second differences are not all the same. So this is not linear. This is not quadratic. So I'm going to do a quick little check. My only other guess is exponential, but I want you to show me the work. So I'm thinking it's exponential. So set up a set of fractions. So take the second over the first. In other words, do a 4 over 8. Or maybe do a 2 over 4. So the second over the one before it. Or how about a 1 over 2? Or, really blow your mind, how about a 0 0.5 over 1? 
If you go to your calculator and divide those out, which I think is the easiest thing to do, or simplify all the fractions, would you agree that they all end up being a 0.5? So I know that it's exponential, and I also know that my common difference is 0.5, common ratio. Uh, just set that aside, we'll just put a circle around that. We're going to need that 0.5, but we'll just use that later. Right? So let's do D just to make sure that you're getting the hang of this. I'm going to just move this down here. So do we even need to look at the X's? How about the Y's? 32 to 18. How do we get from one to the other? It seems like we subtract 14 if my math is right. 18 to 8, that's minusing 10. 8 to 2 is subtracting 6. 2 to 0 and minus 2. So first differences are not equal, which means it's not linear. So that means I got to keep going. How do I get from negative 14 to negative 10? That's adding 4, right? How do I get from negative 10 to negative 6? How do I get from negative 6 to negative 2? There's the second time that I did my differences or my subtractions. Since those guys are all congruent or all equal, what kind of equation is this? Quadratic. So there we have it. That's what we're going to look for. Now as we go through and talk about these, we're actually going to talk about writing an equation given a set of data in class because that's a lot of information and I want you to get the basics of it however please make yourself a note that you are going to have to determine whether you're working with a linear a quadratic or an exponential so you're going to do the same stuff for all of these that we just did so find your first differences if they're equal it's a linear find your second differences if those are equal it's quadratic if those two don't happen, then make sure that you got yourself a common ratio. Set up your second over your first and make sure that they all divide the same. So we'll do those, but hey, it wouldn't hurt to get a step ahead because I'm going to ask you to do this. Those three more practice, decide first if they're linear, quadratic, or ex exponential. Be ready with that, and then we can know for sure. So a couple examples. So lesson summary. What type of equation if, jot this down, number one, first differences are equal, what kind of equation is it? Fill in that blank. Number two, the second differences are equal, what kind of equation is it? And number three, if the ratios are equal, one and two do not apply, what kind of equation is it? And last but not least, identify the type of function. This time my xy table is up and down. Notice my x's all count by ones, I don't even care. You're going to have to work with your y's and look for the first differences, the second differences, or a ratio. So always go in that order. That is it for now on section 96A. And like I said, we'll talk about writing these equations um, in class. Have a great one. We'll talk to you later.